it was an, an extremely ugly congressional debate. Um, amazing. I mean, Democrats calling Republicans Nazis and really just horrible stuff. But in the end, half the Democrats on the Hill supported it, almost every Republican, and it was signed by a Democratic president. The, the vote, the bipartisan vote on welfare reform was actually greater in percentage terms than the bipartisan vote on Medicare in 1965. So in the end, it was a rare example of a very ugly debate where people really disagreed, and in the end, they came together. Um, and since then, I think the thing, to my way of thinking, it's been quite successful. Welfare reform had a big impact on employment by females, especially poorly educated females, and B, had an effect on child poverty, namely that it declined. And from my own work, I can tell you that child poverty declined by 99 or so within three years. That child poverty among female-headed families and child poverty among black children both had reached their historic lows. They plummeted. And it was primarily because the mothers were working. It was not because of any increased government benefits. And the most important point here is that if the nation is going to have an impact on poverty, we have to deal with black kids and we have to deal with kids from female-headed families because their poverty rates are simply so high. There are a lot of moms who can't make it under this kind of demanding regime. Most of them can get a job, but they can't hold it. So they get a job, they lose their job, then they try to find another one, they lose that one, so they're in and out. Some of them are just, you know, try it once and they, they're out. And research shows that these are usually moms who have two or more problems, problems such as depression, which is a big issue among welfare mothers, um, three or more kids, which raises issues about child care, problems with transportation, problems with housing. So most mothers can deal with one of those things and keep going. But once they hit two or three especially, there really is a, a drop off. During the recession, people expected that when jobs were tougher, it takes longer to find a job, there still should be work requirements. People still ought to try to get back in the labor force, just like the typical American does. But it would take longer, so the roles would build up. And they haven't. So it makes you wonder exactly why and you know what we should do about it. But of all the entitlement money, it's a block grant. It would be very easy to cut. You wouldn't, in fact, you wouldn't have to change a word of the legislation. All you have to do is go right to the line where it says how much money it is and just cut that back. And that's going to be tempting. That's going to be very tempting. So yes, I think there is a possibility that there could be less money. And ironically, the more aggressive the country is and that the Congress and the President are in, in solving what I think is the most important problem facing the country. If we're not solvent, you know, we're really in trouble. Uh, the more difficult it's, it could turn out to be and will turn out to be for some programs. Maybe not Program A, but then Program B. And if you don't cut Program A, then you have to cut Program B even more. So there are some real issues here and there will be cuts for sure.